Welcome back to another edition of Come On Now, the podcast. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am joined by Nick Taylor, former CFL veteran and three-time Grey Cup champion. We're doing things a little differently tonight. As I flipped around, as you see, this is a different background. <laughs> as we're watching game one of the NBA Finals while we're chatting, as the game is going on, and at the moment, the Dallas, the, I'm sorry, the Dallas Rams, the Boston Celtics are currently laying the smack it down on the candy asses who are the Dallas Mavericks. But before we weigh in, thank you to our subscribers, followers for supporting this channel. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube page if you haven't. At, and also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Pod, Come On Now Podcast, and X at Come On Now Pod. Now let's get to it, Nick. Introduce yourself. I think you already did. I think you already did. It's Nick Taylor, uh, three-time CFL champ, former NFL player. Former D1 basketball player, um, self-proclaimed fastest man in the world. Um, still here, still doing it. Um, we've been off for a little while, but we're back. I was under the weather, but uh, I'm making it do what it do tonight, baby. And as you all know, I had a baby on Saturday, so <clears throat> I'm out Imagine. of the hospital finally. You know, we got home on Tuesday, so now I'm back in my living my sports room you know florida room area where i have all my tvs and all that stuff and a, and a lot more comfortable situation than in a hospital <clears throat> let's jump into it nba finals who do you have in these finals and why um i picked the Celtics. i picked the Celtics to win the championship before i said it before i said dallas was going to make this final and i said the Celtics was going to be there and i said the Celtics was going to win the championship as much as i hate to say it because i'm a heat fan um, they're going to hang their banner. They're going to hang it this year. Um, the matchups, basketball is all about matchups. I told you that before. Minnesota and Dallas was a bad matchup for – Minnesota was a bad matchup for Dallas. Or Dallas was a bad matchup for Minnesota because they were able to put Luka in the pick-and-roll situations all day against Gobert and they how they guarded it. They trailed him and he put the guy on his hip, McDaniels or Edwards, and then they just threw lobs and he did whatever the heck he wanted to do. Now, when it comes to this Boston series, it's not so much that way just because of Porzingis coming back in his length. So in that situation with the pick and roll, I think the Celtics will stay home a little bit more on the outside. People won't let everybody else do what they want to do. They won't switch it because the switches are just too convenient for Luka, but they will probably blitz him a little bit more and uh, make other guys beat them or try to. But it's a whole different series, a whole different ballpark in this series. Um, with Porzingis on the court stretching the floor, that's a big thing for Dallas. Dallas was able to have Gafford and um, Lively just stay around the basket when they guard it over there. But now when you guard the Boston, who have a five-out offense the whole game, they got Porzingis starting at the top of the key, they, or they have Horford out there, and they stretch the floor the way they do. They just need so much space to create one-on-one -on -one with the other guys to do what they want to do, and they're still going to drive and kick and hit threes, and that's just what they do. So... That's just a big difference in this series with Gafford and Lively not being able to be those guys that they were in last series because they were able to stay home around Gobert. Um, it's just a totally different series, a totally different beast that they're going against, going against this series. I, I like I like Boston in five. I have to agree with that one. Uh, I, muted, I muted myself, my bad. I have to agree there. I actually have Boston in five as well. Um, really, the Boston Celtics are the best team in the NBA this year. Top of uh, you know, talent-wise, they, they have the most talent. They are deep. They can score uh, at will, you know, and just, I mean, off of this game alone, it's gotten a little bit closer. It's an 18-point game now in the third. It was up at like 29 in the second, second quarter, and obviously every game gets a little bit closer in today's NBA. Um, but, of course, you're watching Luka Doncic do a lot of crying in the first half, which is typical of him. And <clears throat> But Porzingis in the first half has been absolutely fantastic. You know, he has hit some shots. There's like, what? <laughs> you know, he, he's hitting some shots. And uh, he's definitely made an impact immediately in this series. You know, it, it is <clears> – people are making this – I keep listening to all these guys on television talking about Kyrie and Luca, Luca and Kyrie. And I'm like, 
Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are pretty damn good. As much as you don't like Tatum, he's like, still a good player. You just don't like, like top yeah, three, like top they're, five player. Yeah, they're and Kyrie's not a top twenty player. So until now, you know he hasn't been a top twenty player all season. Did he even make the All Star team this year? No. I don't even remember. You know, and <clears throat> I still think Luca is massively deficient defensively, and you saw that in the first half. They can't stop a parked car when those guys can go. I mean, those guys can go. And you add Porzingis back into the lineup, and I think they would have won the series regardless of Porzingis. But with Porzingis, it it yanks those guys, those bigs away from the rim. They got a guard. I mean, I watched Porzingis blow right by um, Lively, I think it was, for a dunk in the first half. You you just removed the shot blocker. So, um, yeah, I think the Celtics are going to win this series rather easily. question now becomes if the Celtics win the series and Jalen Brown is the MVP what does that say about Jason Tatum that doesn't say anything about Jason Tatum really. we already know that that Brown is an elite player he's a star in this league he's good we both think that Jalen Brown is if not better is definitely equal to Jason Tatum when it comes to regards of putting the ball in the basket or just being a good all around player because he does it on both sides so it won't be nothing against Tatum. Steph Curry, he didn't win the first MVP. He didn't win the second or the third. He won the fourth one. So he really still regarded Steph Curry as a top five, top ten player. Well, well at that moment, he was a top three player in the league. But I'm saying he was a top ten player overall in history. We still considered him that, or he was coming towards that, even with him not winning the MVP. We knew what he brought to the table and the type of player he was. I think that's the same thing with Tatum. We know the type of player he is, and he's good. We just don't think that he's top five good. He's top 12 good to me. Top 12, top 14, around that area. And I think Brown is around that same area also. So if he don't win it, or even Brown might not win it, or come to how they're looking right now, Porzingis could win the MVP if he continues it on when they go to the road. You know, home games are, everybody's a little bit more comfortable, especially game one, when you're feeling good about yourself, you're up big, you're shooting any kind of shot and it's going in. Now, when it comes to later on in the series, when people make a little bit of adjustments, we'll see how good Porzingis still is or how good everybody else around them still are. But they have an overall good team. You have Drew Holiday is their fourth or fifth best player, but he's easily a two or three best player on any other team, any roster. So when you have that type of you know lineup, because Derek White could be the fourth best player or third best player on the team any given night also. So when you have that type of roster, which you start with five, they're just going to be top, tough to beat, man. They're, they're, it's, a, it's amazing the lineup that they put out there and how they can stretch the court. And it's just going to be a tough matchup for the Mavericks to even be in this series or make it a game. Luka, Luka will literally have to do what D-Wade did against the Mavericks back in 07, 06, 06. He will have to have one of those series where he's just going nuclear. And Kyrie will have to join him like he joined LeBron in 2016, whatever year that was, when he came back from 3-1, when he was giving him about 32, 33 points, 40-point nights, you know, as a second man on the roster. So if they don't have that type of nuclear threat from those two in this series, then it's, they have no chance. They literally have no chance. Uh, maybe Tim Hardaway comes off the bench and gets back in the lineup because he could score the ball. He's been that type of player, but he's been so far down the bench um, <laughs> the past for the whole playoffs that I don't know what happened to him. But that's the type of X factor that they kind of need to come in and give him a spark. To so so right, right now it's 68-52 with 7.25 to go in the third. Um, Tatum has eight points. Well, he's going to have to start scoring because we, we know that this team is – they're prone to start taking bad shots and letting other teams get back in the game. Look like you know, Dallas is getting back in the game right now. They're down 14. So that's the thing with Boston, man. They They – they get up so much on you and they play so good and then they go through these laws. They start taking bad shots. Tatum start taking step back threes, step back threes. Everybody start voicing them instead of start driving and getting the good shots that they were getting all game. Going to Porzingis on the block sometimes with the mismatches and get an easy two points sometimes. And that's their problem. You know, they're prone for them home games every once in a while to look really sad and pathetic there at, on their home court. But then they'll, then they'll go on the road and they'll win every game. So, um, well, well, I mean, he needs to shoot the ball, actually, because he's not even shooting the ball right now. He's only taking eight shots. Don't, don't uh, need to right now. But yeah. But, so, so remember how uh, national media was talking about, well, you don't want to poke the bear. Don't want to poke the bear. You know, 
Kyrie Irving, blah, 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 blah. So I guess Kyrie Irving is not motivated right now. He's five for 14 with 10 points midway through the third. And, you know, I guess because they didn't poke the bear, therefore he decided he didn't well, want to play it. Would I that be correct? <laughs> Kyrie hasn't won, like, the last 10 games against Boston. We know he got swept. Um, so I don't know why they're making this whole scene like Boston don't have a kind of a formula on how to guard him. I, I don't know if he averaged that series, but I'm pretty sure he didn't shoot over 40% in that playoff series when he went broken because nobody shot good in that series. So um, I, I think Boston have a pretty good clue of how to deal with him. Yeah, he's uh he I know he's struggled a great deal versus the Celtics since he left the Celtics. Um Yeah, but uh so, so you have Mavericks in five. No, no Mavericks no. in six? Celtics. I'm sorry, Celtics in five. Celtics. No, but you want me to pick against against you, but I'm not doing it. Celtics in five. I have Celtics in five. I think they're gonna wipe these guys out. It wouldn't shock me if it was a sweep. Um you know, I, you have a situation here where Tatum's not even playing well tonight, and they're up by 14. Could it get closer? I guess it could. I don't think the Celtics are going to lose this game. They're going to – they always have their lulls, and then they go back on 10, 12-point runs, and next thing you know, it's a 25-point game again. Um, that being said, let's jump into the WNBA. Ooh. I'm sorry, the Caitlin Clark oh, BA. Stop it. The, CC, the, the, the newly renamed CCBA. For the Caitlin Clark Basketball Association. <clears throat> Most recently, yep. Angel Reese went on a little diatribe talking about how she'll go back in 20 years and she'll say the reason that we're watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too. I want y'all to realize that. I she think- said this in a, in a lengthy interview. So I ask you this, Nick. When you are great, do you need to talk about your well, you do, but when when you do, do you need to talk about your greatness, or do other people talk about your greatness? There, are, that's why Pete. There are so many people that don't like LeBron, LeBron James. It's because he's always pandering and begging to be recognized. You get recognized when you don't ask to be recognized. What are your thoughts, man? I, I don't have a problem with it, man, and. And her comments wasn't specifically how you said it. At first, it sounded like you just go back in and see what they posted. It sounded like she was just talking about herself. But she brought it back in. She reeled it back in. She was like, she kind of made it inclusive about more. I mean, than, I watched the whole interview. So she go made ahead. it seem more than just her, you know. But at the end of the day, the WNBA, they're getting what they want. They're getting that attention now. And I told you before that it had to sort of be like a reality TV. And that's what they're, start, they're starting to give us. And we're paying attention. We're all tuned in. They're getting more attention than they ever gotten before. And a part of it is Angel Reese. We cannot deny that she was a part of it. Is she the part of it? No, that's always, that's Caitlin. Caitlin is the person who's the main factor. She's the top of the show. She's what everybody came to see. So, you know, just like on The Temptation, they're like, nobody came to see you, Otis. Nobody ain't come to see you, Otis. Everybody came to see Caitlin Clark. And the rest of them are Otis, man. But they could be, they could be beneficiary of, of, of Caitlin Clark bringing eyes to the league. You know, she come, when she bring the eyes to the league, all you have to do is ball. Once you ball, now Rudy watches you. And Rudy say, hey, you're not so bad. Even though he's the toughest cookie to, to tell you that you're not so bad as a woman in that league because they miss a lot of layups. Oh, my gosh. It's, I know we say this every time we get on this show. We talk about the miss layups. And, and some of these – like, I watch that game. The Fever versus uh, Chicago. And after the first quarter, I was just sad of watching it. It was even with Caitlin Clark on the court because she came out and she had her first two shots. And after that, she went stone cold, cold the rest of the game. They ended up winning the game. But it was brutal to watch. I know a lot of people got hyped from the intensity. I'll, I, I'll give them that. They're, they're playing their asses off. They're fighting. And that's what they're going to have to bring to the league. Like, if it's not going to be just a talent, because you know, uh, it's just it is what it is, man. We're not. I'm not going to get mad at it no more. It's just what it is. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna accept miss layups. I'm gonna accept bad three point shots um, that don't come close to the rim. Sometimes I gotta accept that. It's just it's what they can do. But the intensity that they play with, the fight that they they want to win, I I love to see it. I don't want them to be out there babying Caitlin Clark. I don't want to see that. I want to see them. Go against her and compete against her. Now, 
when you do the ill advised shit like like Kennedy did or whatever her name is, um, but you come and chuck the player after the play when she's not even in it. Now, if you're doing it, y'all going mano a mano face to face and you hit her and you catch her with one, I, I'm okay with it. I caught a couple people with an elbow coming face to face in, in my lifetime also on the court. You know, you come in my area, you might get a quick one. I come around, swing the ball around. But when you just do it after the play, that looked like jealousy. I don't care what nobody say. She that's and then after the game, when you say all oh, she, you just relegate her to all she could do is just shoot threes. That's jealousy because she can do a lot more than that. So when you just say that, I know that you're hating. It's okay, and I'm and I'm fine with it because at the end of the day, let's get back to the question. They're bringing eyes to the league, and that's what they wanted. So I'm not. I don't have a problem with what with, with, with Angel said. I have no problem with it. She's part of it. She's not the part, but she is a part of it. So do you, have a, and, do you have a do you have a problem when LeBron James is begging people to say he's the greatest ever? He, I don't say I don't think he's begging. He just oh he oh he panders. He's pa- oh, come on, he, come on. He just wants you to know that he's the greatest player ever. You know, did Michael Jordan ever say I'm the greatest ever? But Jordan played in a different time when it was newspapers and outlets. But now Does he say it now? You have the camera in your face all day. That's right. I'm pretty sure Jordan would say it now. If Publicly? Had, huh? Publicly? I, I, he'll, yes. Uh, so he, didn't even, he didn't even say it in the last dance. So Jordan talked shit about everybody else. Come on. <clears throat> Jordan literally make up scenarios in his head to, to go and compete and, and, and challenge other people. It was it was a story with him and Will Chamberlain going about who's the greatest player ever. There's a story. Jordan proclaimed that he's great. He, he does it not, not do it. He does it also. I'm talking about you're begging for people to recognize you, and because you feel slighted, you have to tell people, it, well, it's not just them. Well, realistically, is Randall Reese even, on the, even remotely close to the level of Asia Wilson? No. No. Would you watch an Angel Reese game or would you watch an Asia Wilson game first? I would watch Asia, Asia Wilson. Why? Because she's better. She can play. She's she's be- wait, wait, wait. You would watch Angel Reese? You just said she's better. No, Asia. Asia. Oh, oh, I'm about to say. I'm, yeah, you'd watch Asia Wilson play because she's actually really freaking good. Yeah, but. But Angel Reese is not really freaking good. She, and She's okay. She's, no, she just need, she needs to get better offensively. <clears throat> She does everything else well. She offers a rebound. Her own shot's pretty good. But uh... well, well, here's the thing I say. Do you ever hear Cameron Brink say, it's about me too, how about Aaliyah Edwards who just dropped 23 on Angel tonight, going for 10 for 12 and 14 boards? Reese finished with 16 and 11, but she shot 5 of 17. Guarantee you the Reese Nation won't be mentioning that 5 of 17, though. They'll say she had 16 and 11. But if yeah. Caitlin Clark goes 5 for 17 and goes 11, 10, Eight, four, and one. It's that Caitlin Clark stunk, and I've never heard. I've never heard Caitlin Clark in interviews say, "Look at me, I'm the reason." Even though she could and she should, you might like it. Maybe if she showed that type of off court and arrogance that Reese carries, maybe the folks who seem to carry the Reese banner and torch, the torch, might like Caitlin Clark too. Maybe not. I don't know. I guess there's a lot of players that play with arrogance, but arrogance on the floor is not arrogance off the floor. Clark is interviewed literally every day, and in every interview, it's, com- it's combed with a fine-tooth comb looking for a soundbite. You haven't gotten any. She's boring. She's boring. Can you imagine that you're boring and people still want to watch you play? Bored as hell. She's boring. Like, she is, she is Iowa boring. Yes. She don't give you anything. Lily White, Tom Brady-like interviews, says nothing, Even gives though- you nothing, and no. yet... Belichick. What? Belichick. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Bill Belichick interviews, says nothing, gives you nothing, and yet you still are buying tickets. I mean, I'm not. You're and, not. But and, people are all over the country and watching these games for a woman who is bland. And, and, and bland no is No seasoning. No seasoning. <laughs> no seasoning. Not even salt and pepper. <laughs> not even salt and pepper. And, I, and there's people that's out there that say, oh, it's because she, you know, the black <clears throat> woman. Oh, because she's white. That's why she's getting it. No. Sabrina Ionescu and and, and uh, uh, Stewart, Brianna Stewart, Stewart and Kelsey Plum and all oh, the white girls before her. You know, they did not bring this type of energy in the fans to this league like she does. No, it's because how she plays. It's because what she does. It's because she can shoot the ball from 30 feet deep. 
off the dribble, fading left. Like, that's what we like to see. It's electric. It's a different than anything else that we see from Miss Underhand Layups. This underhand layups that's bothering me, like, not even overhand slapping the glass or anything like that. So the what she brings is different, and that's why we're like, it's like a magnet. We're attracted to it. We're like, she's bringing us closer every day, every step by step. We have to see what's going on because it's, it's, it's amazing to see what she's done. So it's not a race thing. It's definitely not a race thing. So let's kick that part out. Black. You're about to you're about to get crucified for that, man. Black community is not a race thing. She can <laughs> hoop because we all are down it. A lot of other people cannot hoop the way she does that. It's gonna bring our eyes and attention to it. She can pass the ball with the best of them. She has great floor vision. She makes passes down the court. She has the needle. She does all those things. So that's why the so black community, I'm sorry, that's not why we're tuned into her. She's freaking good, and how she brings it on the court is different than any other player in the league. Because if that was the case, they would be watching those other white girls that's out there who didn't bring the attention that she brought. Or they've been in the league three, four, five years. She just got there, and everything has changed since she got there. The other rookies, they are bringing good things to the league too, because of their social media presence, and you know, and. And what Angel Reese is doing, because at first she didn't want to be the bad guy, then she wanted to be the bad. Oh, guy. she wants now she wants to be now the villain again. The bad guy again. And I'm like, well, take one. I said it before. I remember when she said it after the, they lost the game. I said, Rudy, man, take on the bad guy role. Love it. Don't come out and cry about it because you know after you lose, no, embrace that shit, man. Come back out there, bully your way through the court, bully the league, and be the bad girl and. We're gonna we're gonna people we're gonna jump on your bandwagon for it. We love it. Like if you're gonna stick to it, stick to your truth. And we're gonna rock with it. That's who you are, we're gonna rock with it. You're gonna keep getting the fans to watch. And you just be the bad guy, but shit, the bad guy wins sometimes. Shit. Even you know Joker, what drives what, what's Joker. driving me crazy? The Joker? I mean, you know what wins what drives me crazy about the situation is like she's telling us in this inter this is the same interview about how they're selling out arenas. They have not sold out any arenas. That's a lie. It's a lie. I've looked at the stats. I've looked at the data. They play tonight in Washington. Washington usually plays in a Band-Aid box that seats 4,000. They move the game to where the Wizards play because of Reese, naturally, as they should. That place seats 21,000. You know how many empty seats there were? 11,000? Yeah, you got to get a thousand. If like they, got, the, the, they had the they curtain the upper deck. If they like, got in the, if they got in about fifteen k, I'd have been like, okay. You, okay. you know, you're still and 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 this is that's what. That's but you know, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. So she's she, a game. but she's telling us about the sold out arenas. Yet she hasn't played in front of one sold out arena. Oh, my my bad. She played in front of one. It was in Indiana. Yeah, of course. Where's Caitlin Clark? She can't sell like like she can't sell out her own home arena. It's a band aid box in Chicago. It seats ten thousand people. They haven't put more than 8,200 in there in any game yet this season. This is Chicago. Why doesn't Chicago have them playing in the United Center? Because they know the place will be half empty. They know they can't sell it out. But she's so damn good in her own mind, and she's convinced herself that she's so great, yet she can't sell out these arenas. Caitlin Clark's been to Seattle, 18,000 plus. L.A., she sold more tickets than LeBron James did this year in a home game in L.A. Well, a road game for her, but the, the Sparks had a higher attendance this year with Caitlin Clark than the Lakers did all season. You know, she goes to, to uh, shoot, it was Seattle, it was uh, L.A., it was New York, 17,000 plus, both games. These teams otherwise average 8,000, 7,000, 9,000 people per game. Caitlin Clark on a horrendous team is selling out buildings with trash can Janitors, I'm sorry, JJ Reddick's favorite thing, plumbers, garbage men, and, and, and electricians playing next to her, who also watch her get bowed in the back and stand and look at it and don't go forearm check the girl that did it. There's one woman right now, I don't know if you, um, Angel McCautry. She's a former WNBA player of two time MB, uh, M, uh, uh, I'm sorry, WNBA. A two-time WNBA NBA MVP. 
She was interviewed recently. She said, I'll go play for Indiana and go be her uh her goon, protect. her henchman, protect yeah. her. Because th- what what the Indiana Fever players are allowing to happen is embarrassing. They're letting other people take shots at their best player and watching. And so, they're never getting retribution. They're, I mean, the fact that Aaliyah Boston was seven feet away and her mouth goes, oh, and then goes to pick her up. Why weren't you going after Kennedy Carter? So, and then I heard Monica McNutt on Monday say, oh, she might lose a game check. Okay, that's, that's what I was going to get. Bro, bro, did you see what happened with Angel Reese when she just had ejected the other day? What happened? I mean, we're clearly having massive salary cap violations because Lonzo Ball gets up and says, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, Rudy, but, they don't, you, don't have to come and fight her. But you don't have to get ejected. You can just shove her off, you know? Yeah, just show her like, hey. Yeah, you don't have to get ejected for it. The way you say yeah. come over there, punch her and jump Exactly. All you got to do is come over there and bump her. Just like, what's, what's the little girl named out of uh, LSU? Haley, Haley Van Lip, who yeah. went after Camila Cardoso. Yes. And, and she's 5'6", and Cardoso's 6'7". So even, even, she went after her. Even something like that just shows me that you got my back. Like, you don't have to come out there and get uh, the game. The game is back to 19. It was down to 8. It was back, yeah. it was, it's back to 19, just like that. <laughs> I just with, three, that. with three minutes, it was 72-64. Just a block on uh, Kyrie Irving. And 11-0 since then. That's crazy. But, yeah. yeah, Haley Van Lip goes after a woman three, double her size, and Aaliyah Boston is 6'4", 6'5", and standing there and lets this girl who's 5'9", body check her teammate? Come on. I, I, I'm I so irritated watching this shit. Matt Barnes was 1,000% right. 1,000% right. Where are these ladies? You better go sign somebody who's willing to sacrifice and go after somebody. Because we know Caitlin Clark won't get up and sock somebody. It oh. won't happen. So, and then they compared to Candace Parker. Well, Candace Parker, was when she, she was getting pushed around, you know what she did? She started a fight. Yeah. And she damn started six, a fight. And she's 6'3", 200 pounds. It, it, you know, but it's crazy to me because otherwise Andrew Reese is playing in half-empty arenas. Washington plays in a 3,500-seat arena. Dallas plays in a 7,000-seat arena. Atlanta plays in a four thousand seat arena. They're playing in Division Two buildings. So, so at the, least, <laughs> at the end of the day, they should be grateful. Like even even there's no such thing as bad publicity. As long as we're talking about it, that's a good. Thing. Whether it's bad, whether it's good, like they're getting all the attention to them now. Like they're leading off ESPN shows. To yeah, because of Caitlin Clark, we know. So they're leading shows off now. They're getting the attention, but guess what, Rudy. Do you know anything that happened? Like, have you paid attention to any games really since they played on Sunday versus? Of course not. I was, I was going to bring that up to you. Did they anybody... haven't played since Sunday, and no one's talked about the league since. Because of the hip. Only thing they talked about is the hip check. Exactly. So, or whatever that was, the shove in the it was, back. It was like a forearm into her ribs. Forearm. and. Yeah. So, I haven't, I don't know what's going on since then. So y'all better keep that needle moving, moving that damn needle. In they play the Myst- They play the Mystics tomorrow in Washington. You know that'll be in the Wizards building. Yeah. Let's check out the attendance tomorrow. So, so another thing that happened was we talked about it. it was was the scheduling kind? Con- the WNBA kind of screw her with the schedule. Yeah, they're all ca- they're all catching up now. <laughs> yeah, now, but we said yeah, they did because they played so many games at. The- when nobody else played those games. They played like 11 games in like 20 days. Nobody else yep. did two to three to five games within that stretch. Mm-hmm. And we said, yeah, that's crazy because the girl just came out of college a month and a half ago. She had no rest. She just played 40 games in college. She was the star over there. And then she just literally came back into another league with limited practice time. And she was playing games. It's not about softening soften the schedule for us, just being smart about your best product on the court, with limited the risk of her getting hurt. Not even the other things that come with it. It's her getting hurt because she hasn't had any time to rest or to get her body back right. So if she get hurt, who's watching the WNBA again? Like, <laughs> Not me. I, was, I wasn't saying that they need to make it Take it easy on her in that scenario of, you know, competition. Of course I mean, not. We never said that. WNBA should have been smarter, but I understand why they pushed so much games because they wanted to get their best product out early. 
But I also understand if that best product get hurt because they just finished the season in 40 games and she went to a deep run into the finals and she carried her team and she got drafted a week later and then she was in camp and playing a game a month and a half later. Like, and then they're playing games every day without any practice or recovery time. Guys, that's injuries that could happen real quickly. And now y'all are back to ground zero. And who's watching? So it wasn't about, it wasn't about being soft for her or her playing soft people or, or not soft people, but easier teams early on. No, it was just about how many games they played compared to anybody else. They're like, well, do you look at any other rookie from 10, 15 years ago? I said, no, that, that has nothing to do with that. You have to look at the circumstances to understand the circumstances of the magnitude of, the, of what she is and what she's bringing to the league and how do you protect that. Because if yeah. she falls, if she falters, everything falters around her. So I, I until she, she keeps doing what she's doing and everybody else starts getting recognized because now we see that other players are good and now you can start promoting other players the way you do with her. Until then, you have to protect her at all costs until your game reaches a level where y'all can be okay without her being the front page every time. And mm-hmm. shout out to her new teammate next year, man. She's gonna have Paige on her team next year. Her Paige, they're gonna be. That's gonna be a squad. Now, now that would be uh, well. That would require them losing more and letting Washington win tomorrow, because uh, Washington has was number one pick next year at this point. They are two and nine, and Washington's zero and ten. So that that should be a great matchup tomorrow in Washington. <laughs> in front of in front, imagine if an NBA game had a two and nine versus an zero and ten team. How many people do you think would be at that game? The other team zero and ten. Huh? What? Yeah, two and nine versus zero and ten. How many people would be at that game? I don't mean ticket sales. I just mean be in the building because they sell almost all tickets for NBA games. The Heat are sold out for the season. So, but for some teams, they don't sell out the season, yeah. but they're still selling 17, 18,000 tickets. But who, because I would suggest, I would think that maybe 6,000, 8,000 people will be getting tickets for a dollar, like Marlins games. Because um, I tell you what, there was a picture that I don't know if I sent you the photo yesterday or not, but there was a photo of the Sparks game yesterday <laughs> with the reported 8,200 people there. There might have been 2,500 with the fan, with the staff, the police, the players, the employees, yeah. um, the people in the concession stand, because that crypto.com arena was completely freaking empty. Empty with a capital E. <laughs> empty. Protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Do whatever you got to do to protect it. Um, <clears throat> schedule All right. Please do something better. So let's get off of this uh, WNBA shtick right now because it, it, it does exhaust me. Um, it gives me – I mean, I know people like to talk, talk about it, but it does get tiresome because it's talking about a product I find to be terrible. <laughs> but here we go. This is a topic that I thought Don would love to talk about, but he decided he was going to go to you know Mexico for the weekend or something like that. <laughs> I don't know where the hell he is. He's partying somewhere. Um Justin Jefferson just signed the biggest contract for a wide receiver in NFL history. He is now the highest paid wide receiver. This is a topic we've discussed when we discuss quarterbacks who you think are the most overpaid people around, which I completely agree with. Um, he signs a four year, I think it was a $140 million deal. I don't know how much is guaranteed. I'm probably guessing a hundred, 110 is guaranteed. I'm not sure. I'm not looking at it, but, Immediately after he signs, C.D. Lamb does not show up at OTAs or whatever they got going on right now. OTAs. Why in the – first off, who do you think is a better wide receiver? Second, is this part of a problem because now C.D. Lamb is going to say, I'm better, I want more, and I'm not signing until I get more? I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna say a oh, better. I want more because that say that Justin Jefferson is better. But he's gonna say I want what's in the ballpark. I don't want to be too far off of that. I proved that last year as a number one receiver, as a go-to guy in Dallas, that I'm that guy. I like CD because of all the things he can do after the catch. He's really tough to bring down. Um, 
You can hand him the ball off a couple of times. You know, he's just a dynamic player. I like him. Justin Jefferson is just a whole different piece. Um, his explosiveness, his, uh, his catch radius, the ability to make tough catches in, uh, in tight spaces or even catches you didn't think he was going to make. He's bringing them down. CD, he has a couple drops here and there, but for the most part, he's a, he's a real solid number one receiver. But they're going to they're gonna pay him. He's just not going to get what Justin Jefferson got. He's going to maybe a little bit under. Because if he gets more than Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson is going to hold out the next day and say, hey, let's, let's straighten this up. But the, 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 the big problem is that you're paying most teams that pay their receivers that much don't win. It's been proven. Like If your receiver is getting paid that much, you usually do not win in the NFL. I don't know the last team with a top paid receiver for winning. Because you have to ultimately have more than one receiver on the team because somebody has to be able to take the pressure off of you. If you're the number one receiver, then they just rotate their defense towards you and your other players can't get open, then they're just going to be able to do that the whole game. But if you have somebody else that's dynamic on the other end or maybe another two players that's good enough or adequate, then they can't roll that extra coverage to you as much as they would like to. Now your offensive coordinator is in a damn you know, in his damn office, pulling out his hair every night and every day, thinking, what position I can put you in so you don't get doubled? I got to put you in a slot. I got to put you in the outside. I got to put you in the backfield. I got to put you in motion. And they're thinking about different ways, and that's just, it's, it's, it's just a little tougher when, instead of just having good players around. You know, as you know, as an offensive coordinator, you get paid to, to come up with these different type of ways to get your best player the ball. But if I have other players that's just, you know, that's okay because I was able to pay, you know, more players, then it makes my job just a tad bit easier. So, um, Justin Jefferson, I'm glad he got his money. Um, shit, who else? Who are they gonna pay over there in Minnesota? There, who's throwing him the ball? Who's throwing? Well, they, could, they, they could pay JJ McCaffrey fifty million a year. Who who's throwing? Who's throwing? Justin? I just Jefferson? told you, JJ McCaffrey. You mean McCarthy? McCarthy. I forgot his. I forgot his damn name. He's so bad. Like. We just, I, thought we just, about, I thought you were talking about McCaffrey. Christian, Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> I don't say that. That's how insignificant McCarthy is that I forgot his damn name. Like they, they could pay him fifty million a year. You mean they gave him his rookie contract? <laughs> yeah, I mean they could pay him ten times that. You know, now McDonald's very he happy. Paid, he don't get paid again for another four or five. I know. Years, yeah, he'll, and he'll never get paid again because he'll never he won't make it past five. But what what happens now? But what happens now if CD does do something like that and sits out and says, I'm not coming back till I get more? Like, that's the problem that exists in the NFL well, to me. It's like now, first of all, I think Tyreek Hill's better than both of them. Yes. And, and Tyreek yeah. Hill should get paid more than both of them. And that's the problem I have with these NFL contracts. And I think it's a problem I have with contracts and professional sports across the board because it keeps bloating these contracts up. I, want, I think guys should get paid money. But when you're overpaying positions because their egos are so big that they, because someone will pay them somewhere, yeah. even yeah. if they suck as a team. They're still going to pay him, which is a problem, because it completely skews things. Like the Dolphins just paid uh, Waddle, I think, three years, like $75 million, $80 million. So now the Dolphins have two receivers making $25, $30 million. $55 million a year. They don't have a linebacker who can tackle. And they got rid of – they let go of Christian Wilkins, who's on the top three defensive tackle. I I, I mean – and, of course, still haven't signed a real quarterback because, the, because Tua will, doesn't seem like he's going to play on, the, on, on a franchise tag, although he'd be absolutely stupid not to because if he's playing on his rookie contract and he gets hurt, he's got a bigger problem because he's playing for a lot less than, like, $40 million, you know, on, on a franchise. I, I just it, – it's they want to know why they don't win. Teams don't win is that these guys are on a cap and they're greedy and they don't care about their teammate getting paid. They care about themselves, and I understand it. You got you got to deal with yourself. Yeah. But what's to keep Tyreek Hill from saying, "Look, I want four years and a hundred and sixty million, because he's the best of them all." Well, he, he deserves it. If you're gonna I mean, if without Tyreek Hill, the Dolphins are five and twelve. Yeah. I mean, you played the position, D- DB. Who would you be most afraid of guarding? Uh. 
for me, for me per se. It might be a bigger guy because you're a smaller, you're a smaller corner, but uh, Tyree Kill is unreal. No, 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 faster guys definitely more of a threat. I, I could deal with bigger guys all day because it's just a physical game, and I usually could deal with that better. Just for me personally, uh, those quick guys that got that cha cha cha, cha they get in and out of their breaks, and then they could take off. They could go to zero to sixty in fucking three seconds, like the cheat again. I say, got that. You That's gotta Tyree Hill. <laughs> you got to be a little bit more cautious because one little fuck up, and you're embarrassed that that guy's in the end zone. You're <laughs> embarrassed, and he's in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing whatever celebration he want to do at that point. You, you know, they come up with all these celebrations all week during practice. And, 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 they're, they're bowling pins. They're in a, they're yeah, pledging yeah. a fraternity. They're yeah. on a roller coaster. Yeah. You so know, dance moves early in the week, and I just don't want to be the guy that they would dance on and do all their, their celebrations on. So, but Tyreek. It's one mistake, one one jab step, the right wrong way, he's going to the end zone. You can't catch him. Everybody else, you might have to make two mistakes for them to do what they got to do to embarrass you. Like, they may still make the play and do what the hell they do, but you have to make, like, two mistakes. Like, oh, okay, I broke wrong and I missed the tackle. Tyreek, you might not even get your hands on it. <laughs> and then they like, oh. So, yeah, Tyreek is definitely the best receiver in the league still. But now you got, but now you got a, and you saw, I think it was a week or, week or so ago when Dak Prescott made that ridiculous comment saying, well, I don't play for money. And Dak Prescott just w- was at one point the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I get what he was even trying though to he say. damn sure didn't disturb, what? I get what but, he was, I get what he was trying to say. Yeah, we, I get what he was trying to say, but it sounded completely tone deaf and ridiculous because if you're going to say that, then, you can say, you can say something better that says, well, I don't need to be the highest paid guy. I want to be paid in line with my contemporaries and people at my level. But what is Dak Prescott's level? He's a loser. Whoa. He, he, he's a loser. He's won two playoff games in the decade. <laughs> you know, he never wins an important game that matters for the Cowboys, he's, he's no matter top, how good they do in the regular season. He's a top 12 quarterback. So I, top I'll 12, so he's, a, so he's a mid-level quarterback in the NFL. So he's around 8 I mean, I I would have him probably at 15 because I don't think he's that good. He's right. They, they made a comparison to Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff is better than him because I don't think he's close. I like Jared Goff also. Jared Goff just took the Detroit Lions to the conference finals, and they didn't lose because of Jared Goff. No, they, they lost because lose. their coach doesn't they know how to kick a field goal. They did not lose because of Jared Goff. <laughs> Jared Goff didn't lose that game. Cowboys <laughs> lost because of Dak Prescott. Absolutely. And they've lost because of him before. Before. Hey, not being you know, able to step up in the big time game, <clears throat> doing the things that they need to do, or just play like how he played in the regular season. So when it came to the big time games, where teams are dialing up on you, when they're, they're coming up with, you know, they're done. so the defensive coordinators they save a little couple of things for the playoffs for each mm-hmm. player they play. It's just not going to be the same as that. Game. So him not being being able to adjust in those moments is a big thing for us. Like him not seeing that. They're not just going to sit in that regular defense that you they, they showed on film the whole time. Of course, they came up with a whole different game to play for the playoff. Like, it's different. It's big time now. You have to be able to make a different type of move or play on your own. That's not what the script says. You have to be able to go off script. And he hasn't been able to go off script in the playoffs. I'm sorry, my people. My voice is a little nasally right now. I'm coming down. You know, it was, it was a week from me. It's going around the whole city, I see. Uh, yeah, when you have kids in daycare, you're always sick. Oh, Lord. Yes. That's how it goes. You, you, kids in daycare, you will always have a cold. And so, like, it'll be a monthly occurrence. Ho- hopefully, it doesn't mean that you get over the cold and you catch it again immediately thereafter. But it, it happens. I know that for sure. Uh, I, I just think Dak Prescott, I mean, my God. <laughs> the guy is sitting here saying he doesn't care. He doesn't play for money. Like, then what the hell are you play for, bro? Like, you could go you go, go work at a desk then if you don't play for money. How about you play for zero? If you don't play, play for, for a, play for a dollar and let all your teammates get paid. Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, whoever else they got in that roster. Let them bring in more talent to protect his sorry ass because I don't think he's any good at all. Um, I mean, if he's yeah. fifteen. Zach, I don't think he's trash. I don't think he's that good. Ah, I mean, uh, you're 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 generous. Okay, let's let's talk about that because we went to have this topic earlier this year and we never did it. Yeah. Number one quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Number two. Uh, Josh two. Allen. I'm. I'm okay. I'm not Lamar Jackson. Whoever. Lamar. Let's Burrow. let's say Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. Burrow. Um. 
Brock, Brock Purdy. Yep. Brock Joe Purdy. Burrow. That's five. Yep. Okay. Jeff Goff. Jalen Hurts. Goff. Goff is six. How about Hurts? Hurts. Okay, that's seven. Uh, we're missing people. I know we are for sure. Oh, the guy. Um, uh, love. Who, uh, yeah, love now. Um, dude in Green Bay now for sure. Um, that's eight. He hell, he just beat Dak Prescott's ass. Stafford. Stafford is nine. Uh, uh, Justin Herbert's ten. Yeah, there we go. Hell, I would say Tua's better than him at eleven. And I don't even like Tua. I would say Tua's better at eleven. That's eleven. Uh, you, you wouldn't. He threw for. He, he led the league in passing. No, not Tua. Take Tua out. Well, he led the league in passing, and he had better numbers than Dak Prescott did last year. No, he didn't have better numbers. Yes, he did. He yeah, threw he more did. Than did he have more touchdowns? I'll go look it up for you right now, because I mean, he led the league yeah, in passing. Sure he more Let's see. He he threw for four thousand six hundred twenty-four yards. He threw for the most yards, um, in the league. He was. He had the high, He had the. Uh, Fourth highest per completion. Well, second highest, really, because I don't count Nick Mullins and Mason Rudolph with four and five games. So he was second in yards per attempt um, behind Brock Purdy. He, um, well, how many? Dak, Dak led the league in touchdowns. Yeah. And how, much, uh, and how much of that was because he had Tyreek Hill? Oh, well, how about CD Lamb? You just said, I mean, you you just, just, but you just. I think he's better, but you, but don't act like the the damn Cowboys don't have are not loaded with weapons. He had Waddle. Who's better than Waddle? Or as okay, a... but uh, the Dallas Cowboys had like the third best offense in the NFL. Yeah, because Did they not not was because of Dak or was because of the weapons. No, Dak. You don't even okay, know. Well, Q, QBR. Um, I guess Dak here is second. QB rating. Dak is second. Uh, I mean, maybe he did. I, I mean, I don't even like Tua, but I wouldn't trade Tua for Dak. I would say C.J. Stroud's better than Dak. Um, I would, hell, I would take Baker Mayfield over Dak. Uh, Baker Mayfield, that, no, not I would take. I, I would. I, hell, I, I mean, yeah, I, w- I would take Trevor Lawrence over Dak. Ah, uh, not yet. Um, not yet. Trevor's I'm too. going through this. I wouldn't take Deshaun Watson over Dak, but I would have taken him before he went to, you know, rub and tug jail. Um, <laughs> you know, who so, else? Here? Like I said, he's around. Eight, I mean, I think I'm like around 15. I think the I think the guys after 13, 14, 15 are just complete garbage. Eight to 12. Eight to 12. You just said how can it be eight to 12? Well, you just named 12 guys better. No, I named I named ten. You I named the, okay, you named ten. So he can't be eight. He can't be I nine. He can't be ten. I didn't agree with two. I didn't agree with uh, Lawrence. Okay, but I, that was like I, I mentioned Lawrence like eighteenth. No, no, no. I had two at eleven. I didn't agree so, with Baker yet either. Baker I, again. I, I okay. Let's go through this again. Brock Purdy. Oh, you forgot Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is absolutely better than him. Um, no, Lamar Jackson. Kirk is in the same fucking boat as him. They're both yeah, the go look, go look at Kirk Cousins' numbers yeah. over the last decade. Kirk yeah. Cousins is one of the best quarterbacks in football yeah. in the both last in decade. The same boat with a the fucking, they're both on the same boat. Okay, well, again, Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, C.J. Stroud, Jarrett Goff, Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert. That's eight right there. Yeah. Joe Burrow, that's nine. That's what we had. Yeah, we but I had another one. We had another one in there. Did we say Jared Goff? No, yeah. I'm sorry, Jordan Love. That's ten. So those are the ten. Yeah. So at best, he's eleventh on your list. That's what I said. Eight to twelve. No, you said eight to twelve. That means he could be eight, nine, or ten. No, it means he could be between eight to twelve. Yes, exactly. But according to who? You just said he's. You just said he's worse than eight, nine, and ten. I see. I said before we named those days, I said he'll be around. Eight okay, days. now that we've named them, you have him at eleven. Okay, around eleven. Yeah. So between. But he's eight. not a top ten quarterback. So you're going to pay a number eleven quarterback three hundred million dollars? No, but that's just the market that we're in. That's the world we're in. Again, but you're the anti QB. No, the market we're in is a bullshit market. Do it. I'll probably I'll probably get fired as a GM because I'm not <laughs> paying people what they're not worth. I'm going to go up to you. You're not that good, bro. I can't pay you that. And I already told you how I feel about quarterbacks getting paid this big amount of money when they're not that good. I don't think if you wanted to give somebody what twenty million dollars, I forgot who it was. It was was it, it was, was it golf or Dak? It was true. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not 
Hold on, give me one second. One second. I'm not. I'm not giving. Okay, and Nick. Nick is snotting away on. He, he didn't even mute the shit, man. <laughs> I can't be embarrassed like that. This, this goes global. This, this. You need to learn to mute your mic before you snot all over the place. <laughs> I didn't think I was. Gonna, I think I was. Gonna, all right, whatever, Rudy. Rudy, get to the topic. Okay, so Dak Prescott, he, he doesn't play for money. We've established he's, he plays for the fun of the game and the love of football. Take twenty million. Yeah, if you love it so much, take twenty million and go, go get let CD Lamb get paid fifty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let Michael Parsons go cash his cash. So I don't think so. When we go look at it, I don't think anybody should be within ten million of Patrick Mahomes. So let's just break it down there. Patrick get whatever sixty fifty million. So the next quarterback should be at like forty. So then we got our forty million quarterbacks. It's going to be Lamar. We're going to have Burrow, uh, Purdy once he gets there. Uh, Purdy uh, still plays for a per diem of like eight, like yeah, fifty dollars yeah, a day. We got, we got, we got, so that's the forty million dollar range. Now we're going to bring it to the thirty million dollar range. That's where we got our staffers. We have our uh, uh, golf. Uh, who else we going to have? Uh, Herbert. That's our thirty million dollar range. Not our $20 million range. This is where we bring in the Dak Prescott, the Kirk Cousins, the two attack, blah, 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 uh, uh, this, These are the $20 million range. This is how I tell you about quarterbacks. When these quarterbacks are just getting paid just because we have to give it to the quarterback because he's the best player on the team. He's the most important player on the team. That's the most bullshit because if my center can't hike the ball, then how the hell is he important? <laughs> If the left tackle doesn't block for him or the right tackle doesn't block for him, he ain't that important. How is he important? If my running back doesn't come up and take off this linebacker who's blitzing, how is he important? If my running back doesn't run the ball and soften the defense and bring safeties up, how is he important? You know? So when they do that, just because, oh, he, he has to know what everybody's doing, I get that. I get that. I, I appreciate that. But I can say down, say hike your head, the ball off, that OB, I should get $50 million. If I can't read defenses or throw the ball through zones, like this, I, I don't like how you just have to give to somebody the money. I don't. Okay, okay. So the the Celtics um, have won this game. They're up twenty five again. The Mavericks threw the white flag in, um, and we're on on our way to seeing Jalen Brown be named Finals MVP. I'm watching uh, the he's got twenty two points. Oh, he's What's got twenty. Jalen Brown's got twenty two points right now. Uh, six rebounds, two assists, three blocks, three steals. Um, Tatum's at 15, 10, and five. Uh, Por- Porzingis has 26 and three on blocks. But yeah, Jalen Brown on 12 shots has 22 points. Most of- <laughs> oh, look at Kyrie with the towel over his head. He's pouting. And- you know that. Jalen Brown got uh, coloring in his beard. Cause remember, he went w- really gray, and now his beard is all black. Like he colored all the gray out. Like, see, you can't do the coloring of the beard if people already know that you have a gray beard. Why not? You need to do it before. Like when you get a strand here and there, you can. That's when you do the coloring. You, you don't wait till you you got gray patches everywhere. I got one right here. Yeah, but you're not, but you're not a, a, a nationally prominent figure like Kyrie Irving, who's had like the homeless hairstyle. You know, and, and gray patches all over the place. But Rudy. one hair, that's when you start doing it. Rudy, you know, you don't. What, what, what are you going to say? Oh, you color your I, hair. I mean, it's like when LeBron James decides to go get just for men or whatever, or okay. hair plugs or, or a wig or whatever he's wearing. Rudy, okay, I did it. What you going to do about it? I did it. What? <laughs> okay, I did it. It's over. I did it. I do it. I have no problem with it, but I did it and you never knew it. No, you can know it. I changed it up. Okay. I I looked at my what if, what if you what if you colored your hair orange or something like that? You say, okay, change it up. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So um I don't know if you saw this, but the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight has been postponed. A A R P because because Mike Tyson on a flight, I believe it was to Miami. Why is he flying? To, why is he flying to Miami? Um, when he's supposed to be training. What? Why not fly to Miami? Well, he's supposed to be training for a fight, you know. Uh, and I know he's not training in Miami. Why not? Um, I, oh, yeah. Good luck there. 
Uh, the heat, you know, running around in the heat. Yeah. Well, he, he apparently had an ulcer flare-up. So they have now rescheduled the fight to a date to be determined. Logan Paul does his trolling job and says, well, you ready to fight, Jake? So now there's different types of speculation and uh, conspiracies. I, I saw the most recent conspiracy by Brendan Schaub um, on his podcast. They were really gonna fight. Hmm? That they really were never going to fight. That, they, that, that the whole thing could potentially have been a scam. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it was, but the scam is this. Mike, because remember, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson are friendly. They were buddy, like kind of buddies. Um, and he says, you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is make some training videos of you throwing mitts in fast forward. Because we know none of that stuff was in real time. It was, in, it was doctored in, in, in speed motion. Because he wasn't, and it was all chopped up together to make it like, pop, 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 pop. And then another chop. Like, okay, because after those four punches, he was like, yeah. And then you get, I'll give you $10 million just to do that. You help me get on Netflix because I can't do it by myself. And then a month before the fight or a month and a half before the fight, you drop out. You get an ulcer. And I'll give you $20 million. And my brother comes in and we're going to fight each other in a Paul versus Paul matchup. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. It's smart. But it, it, would, it, would it actually shock you? No. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they're smart. Because they, they knew that Mike Tyson they would get everybody going. No, how, no matter how old he is. People still believe he's Iron Mike. Like, yeah, why? I don't know, but okay, he's yeah. He's going to go out there. He's going to dominate. He's going to knock him out. He's 60 yeah, the, the geriatric guy's going to knock out the 27-year-old. He's years old. Point, <laughs> like, guys. Age matters. I don't care what you say. At some point, age matters. You know why? You know when you get up older, and, you know, your thing doesn't get up like it used to? You know why? Because age matters. No, it's for the guys who always say, I'm I'm in the best shape of my life, but you can't get a fucking boner. Yeah, I'm in the best shape of my life. No, I, I would never be in a better shape than I was when I Yesterday. was 24, 25. Yeah. You know what? Actually, you know what? When I was 30, I was actually in the best shape of my well, life. Well, 30 is prime. Yeah, 30, 31. I was 30 is your athletic, as adult, athletic prime. Should yeah. be at least. But 60? AARP. So I'll cut it out. So I won't be surprised if that was a setup. Like when I heard about it, I say, "Huh, they used Mike Tyson, name, which is still a galvanizing name because he's Mike. He's Iron Mike might not be Iron anymore. I wouldn't want to take a punch from him still, but I believe I could run around in circles enough till he gets tired because he's old, and then I'll just <laughs> kick him in the knees one time because he's old. Shit, you're old guy. Eventually, my youth is gonna outlast you. I don't care who you are for the most part." And I don't, you know, so I think they use Mike name, and they played us. They're like, okay, we got Netflix, Netflix. Come on now, that's big. Kevin Hart's on Netflix because they're gonna because Jake Paul's gonna fight somebody. Yeah, he's gonna he, fight somebody. Yeah. I don't know who it will be. He's going to fight someone on that date on Netflix. He's not gonna sit around and wait. It might take Mike Tyson six months to fight if it's even gonna happen. So it's. I mean, he's going to fight somebody, you know. I, I just thought that was a really funny thing that Brendan Shaw, Shaw brought up because I was like, you know, as stupid as it sounds, it actually could just be true. They played us, bro. They played us. Bro. They played us, yo. You know, I mean, and I, don't, I mean, oh, I forgot. This is an addition to Combat Corner, so I'm a little bit late saying that since we're talking about a fight. And might as well bring up the other fight that happened this weekend. Oh, Wilder? Not, not, the, U, not the UFC fight because I talked about that earlier this weekend. Wilder? Weekend. Oh, oh, not not even Connor. I mean, the Con okay. We can talk about Connor first. No, Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor might not fight now. He may have had an injury that's speculated. He's they canceled the press conference in Dublin, and now Michael Chandler has left training camp in Coconut in um, Deerfield Beach and gone back home to Tennessee. I think he lives in. And uh, you got the cryptic tweets going on around. And the reality was Conor McGregor's been on video partying it up like he's a 22-year-old alcoholic um, in, you know, getting out of college or in college and 
drinking every damn night and acting a fool and you're sitting here supposed to be training for a fight that's supposed to take place in 23 days. Um, and now it's rumored that it's potentially off. Usually when the UFC is really quiet about something, it's bad. Because I've listened to so many MMA shows and pro fighters who say, usually when they talk to me, I mean, if the UFC talks about it, it's okay. But the longer they stay silent, it's like they're trying to figure out something. Because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but what happens when they have a, a, a main event for the UFC, the card is sold out already. It's the largest gate in, a, in an arena in UFC history because they keep bumping the prices up. And it's Conor McGregor. So you could put Tweedledee and Tweedledum. You and I could be on the fight card and the main card and the thing would sell out because of Conor McGregor. Yeah. And people just love Conor so much. Now, if Conor drops, who in the world would Mike Chandler fight? He's not going to fight anybody. He's been sitting for two years waiting to fight this dude. You know? If he drops, they have to refund people's money. Because they have to have the main event, at least one guy in the main event, be on that main event yeah. that they promoted. Yeah. If they both fall off, those thousands of dollars of tickets, like $1,000, $2,000 tickets, these people could start actually asking for refunds by rule. So I don't know what's going to happen with this fight, but I'd still want to see it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a meaningless fight, but... I like fights, so I still want to see it. But this is a bad situation because this is International Fight Week. And that's a big event for the UFC. Do you think that? I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on uh, Connor. And... I mean, Connor's still a draw, man. But damn, oh, yeah. Connor's been done for the last five, seven, eight years. He hasn't been Connor. How long has it been? Five, six, seven years? It's been a while. He hasn't been Connor for seven years. Mm. Don't have to, and he doesn't have to be Connor anymore. Mm. So I don't even know why. This was like why is he was still getting the flame and still get why is he still burning it? Why is it still burning? Like it's over, like that's the card. But we still us as as you know, Americans and people that's into sports, we still hold on to this this this, this passion of, of the person that we once saw that it could still be that person, even though it's over, like Michael Jordan with the Wizards, he was never going to be Michael Jordan again. <laughs> he was never going to be that guy. Dwayne Wade with the Miami Heat was never going to be Dwayne Wade the second go around. was never going to be the first Dwayne Wade again. Uh, those days are over. Mike Tyson at 60 is never going to be Mike Tyson at 25. No. Nope. So we still hold on to these. Even though they show us countless times that it's over. Like Deontay Wilder, he showed us that it's over. That was the one I was going to discuss with you next, was the Deontay he, Wilder. He showed us that it's over, but we, as sports enthusiasts or people who really was drawn to the person that we grew up in, we loved, and they gave us memorable moments after memorable moments, we like, damn it, they can still do it. I don't care what's going on with their life. I don't care if he's not working out as hard as he used to or he's partying all, or he's 60, or he's 55, or he has a broken ankle, or he just came back from Achilles surgery. He's that same. No, it's over. It's, it's, guys, it's over. Let it go. Did you see the highlights of or the, the, the lowlights for Deontay Wilder this weekend against the sorry. large, large Chinese dude? Uh, I don't remember his name. but Sorry at first, but then I realized. No, I realized Deontay had a great career. Like, he came out of nowhere. He did what he did. He became a champion, defended his belt. He made millions of dollars. He got to the main stage. He was a, 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 a count away from, from being really on top of the world because when he knocked out uh, Fury in round 12 Fury, of the first fight. Out and Fury bounced back up like Undertaker uh, at the last second, even though it was felt like a slow count. Like He was this close from being, like, in this range of a uh, you know, as a top boxer of all time. And now it's just like your time has passed you by. I think he turned 38 now. 38 years old. He don't look 38, but he's 38 years old. Damn good. He comes out there, he gives you the perception that I'm going to be this guy that I used to be. I have this killer right hand that, that has fucking metal in it. And when I hit you with it, you're going down. 
and he can't do it anymore. It's just like I don't even know. We didn't even know who. I don't, I don't even know who he had a fight. I forgot that I forgot the fight was this weekend. I mean, I had other, I had other things, I had other things going on. Okay, yeah, like having, did. like having a baby. I did, I did watch. I confession, Ooh. I did watch the UFC fight Ooh. in my hospital. I didn't know until I looked on Facebook and I see the guy that I didn't know. I didn't know what time it was at. That was the thing. I forgot what it was on the zone. I think it was in Saudi. So it probably was at four o'clock in the afternoon when I was in a C-section, yeah. emergency room. So I couldn't watch it. But when I flipped on my computer, when I got back on, you know, went back in the room or whatever, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. I thought he'd lose. I thought he'd lose, you know, because I thought he, I thought the Parker fight just showed that he's washed. Yeah. And that man who, he, who, who hit him dropped Parker multiple times in their he's fight. He's older than Wilder. Oh, no, he's an old man. He's like over 40. He's like 40 years old, but he is oh, like yeah. 280 pounds, 290. And you know what's sad is that Every time Wilder has lost a fight, he cool. makes excuses. <laughs> he, he, like, you got, you got clipped. You then did a, a pirouette spinning around. And the man came after you and clipped you right on the jaw. And people are, this is what idiots Don't in Facebook. It. Oh, it's illegal what he did. Illegal? No, it's not. <laughs> he hit him in the face. <laughs> he didn't hit him in the back of the head. He, he hit him square on his feet. jaw. He spun him around. <laughs> Had him dizzy, and then cr- now I couldn't believe Wilder got up at the eight count or nine yeah. count. That was amazing, but he couldn't stand really, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and he would have been probably potentially badly injured if he had, you know, bit, been allowed to continue. But it's just like I, I what? And then he says the man bit me on the ear. Like, oh my god, it's always he something with, his, with this guy. He bit you with his fist. <laughs> Like, there's always, like, Wilder just can't take the L and move on. It's always, there's some reason. Bro, you're 38. That's the reason. You were never a great boxer. You were a puncher. Yes. You could hit hard. You could drop people. You could lose a fight for seven rounds like he did versus Luis, uh, the Cuban fighter that he fought, who Louis, Louis, I forget his last name. Um. Now this guy was a, a Cuban, a Cuban the boxer, guy. huh? The chubby guy, right? Yeah, the chubby Cuban boxer who was beating him for five rounds, six rounds, and then Guadalajara catches him with a right and drops him and ends the fight. Like he was getting dominated. That was the fight before he fought Fury, you know. So it's like there have been her uh, holes in his game forever, <laughs> hidden by the fact that he can not hit you and put you to sleep. You know, and that just doesn't exist anymore because he doesn't have the same speed in his punch. Wow. Y- you know, what happened? Winnipeg is just getting. Oh, you're watching the CFL right now. Is this the regular season or preseason? So, this is the regular season. Game one. They're playing the defensive. They... Oh, I wasn't. So I wasn't asked. So now. So they play so let's, the... get off the... let's get off this. T- talk about anything going on CFL, Nick. Man, so Winnipeg is playing Montreal this today, right now, at this moment. And they're playing the. They're actually the game is in Winnipeg after Montreal won the championship last year. Usually, when you win a championship, you, you play at Montreal. <laughs> you be playing at home game, so it's a championship repeat. CFL in every league kind of likes to win that championship yeah. repeat. CFL has more of an opportunity to do it because there's only nine teams, so it's kind of easier to schedule that. Winnipeg doesn't lose at home, but they're they're are, losing right now. They are getting destroyed going in the fourth quarter, twenty-seven to six. Montreal just did a flea flicker for a touchdown. This is not Winnipeg like their offense is getting dragged. But shout out to Montreal. Montreal defense from the last eight games of last year. This is how they end up winning the championship because it was a middle of the road team. And they added a a defensive player of the year player to the roster who got cut who was sitting on the bench for the last for the first eight games of the season because he got cut by the new team that he signed with. But because he, he's older and stuff like that, and sometimes people. You know, I don't know how they, this league works sometimes, but he got picked up by that team. That defense turned around right when he got there, and they added another linebacker who finished, who used to play in the CFL before, and he went to like the UFL, whatever league that is, and he came back. Um, so they finished last year on a tear defensively, and they went hot into the playoffs, and that defense carried them along the way. So they ended up beating Winnipeg by three points last year on the last play of the game. Um, Winnipeg had the game in control for the most part to the end, and then they ended up winning. So this game is in Winnipeg 
And I'm still thinking Winnipeg is the team to beat this year. But this game right now, they're showing some holes. Um, defense giving up some big plays. And Montreal, shout out to them, man. Their defense looks tremendous. They're still on that rampant, torrid pace that they were on at the end of last year when they weren't even giving up like 12 points per game. And right now, Winnipeg has scored six points at home. Winnipeg doesn't lose at home. Over the last three, four years, Winnipeg has probably lost two games at home. I think I lost one game when I was with them at home to Montreal. Our kicker missed two outfield goals from like 20 yards when we had the game one. Um, so this is a total domination, man. And I had Winnipeg as the top team in the CFL going into this year still. Um, after watching this game, I know it's for game one. Um, but Montreal has definitely shown me that they're here to stay. They're they're going to be here for the whole year um, as one of the top teams in the East coming back out of it. Um, and they are went on the road and did this to Winnipeg. But um, also this week we get um, Bo Levi Mitchell, the the top quarterback in Calgary history, who had the highest winners percentage before he left um, Calgary. He's returning finally back to play against his old team because last year. You know, after COVID, they would try to lessen travel between West and East teams. So they only they didn't play them last year. They played them, but they played it in Hamilton. So he actually gets to go back to Calgary. Old stumping grounds. He won two championships at, um, and they play tomorrow. So that will be a good game. Um, both teams will be at probably the bottom of the league. But it's early. You never know. Montreal was favored to be at the bottom of the league last year. They ended up winning the championship. So these two teams will be duke it out. they probably be bottom of the league. They will be at the bottom of the league. But it'll be good for Bo Levi to go against his old team, get back in uh, that mad stadium, and go against uh, his old players, his old coaches. So that'll be fun. We have Saskatchewan versus uh, Edmonton. Sass gets their quarterback, Trevor Harris, back this year. He got hurt after game three or four last year. He tried to make it back by the end of the year. He broke his leg or something like that. But he's back. Um, they have a new coach from Toronto. The defense coordinator became their head coach. He's bringing a hard nose, hit him in the mouth type style football over there. They're gonna blitz a lot on defense. They made a, they got they broke the Toronto record for sacks in the season last year. They forced a lot of turnovers. So that should be an intriguing team to watch this year. Sass. They added uh, Yoshi Hardwick from Winnipeg. Their heart and soul on their own lineman. Uh, which they look like they're missing this year so far in Winnipeg. So Sass will be a team on the rise this year. Edmonton, they bring back Matt Beck from the other football league, the UFL, whatever it was called, down here in the Free Football League. Uh, and he won the championship the last time he was there in Toronto, but he, as they beat Winnipeg when I was hurt. Uh, not going to go into that, uh, but they actually won that game, but... Matt Beck got hurt. Chad Kelly came in, who was suspended for the first nine games of this year because of sexual misconduct towards a staff member. So that will put Toronto down in the dweller for the first nine games. I think their backup quarterback, Dukes, will come in and be okay. But I look at them and see like a 2-7 and seven start, and then Chad Kelly comes back and try to save their season. Um, who else we got going on? Uh, Ottawa, Drew Brown, new quarterback for Winnipeg. He should be the guy. He will be the guy. Um, hopefully, the turnaround Ottawa. They've been on the bottom, like fourteen and fifty-eight the past four seasons. So they need to turn it around. They add Dominique Ryan's, who is a guy who jumped over me two times in one game and got touchdowns over me. So me and him, he's from Miami, so he's my guy. But I really will punch him in the mouth the next time I see him for those two touchdowns that he caught on me and embarrassed me on CFL television. But now nah, he's a good player. Um, that should be a good one-two combination for them. They have a couple other receivers that's good, Hardy. Um, their defense gave up too much explosion plays last year. They have to get better with that. But they have a good quarterback now, so they should be better. The CFL is going to have a funny year. Uh, look out for my CFL power rankings next week as I jump more into it. Today was just a little brief little intel about it because I am watching Montreal just put a foot in Winnipeg ass right now. And, and I can only presume that Winnipeg will not be number one next week after they were number no, one no, in your no, preseason I will probably power move rankings. Down. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I will move Winnipeg down after seeing this game. BC, uh, there will be the team that's contending with Winnipeg out, at, out west, even though I think it will be Sass. I think Sass will jump BC. Uh, but after this game, I don't know. We'll, 
it's game one. It's game one. Thing. I, I'm not gonna let the moment change me. Uh, Rudy will get into CFL more because Rudy, um, he wants to argue with me, so he's gonna watch it some more and learn more about it to argue with. So me. this is not CFL related, and of course I will watch. Um, are there some play? Okay, first, are there some players that people in the U.S. Yes, because as we are a podcast that's based in the U.S. Yeah. Are there players that people from the U.S. that watch NFL would know in the CFL? Would know? Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of players. Uh, Nick Marshall, who's still with Saskatchewan Rough Riders, he was the quarterback of Auburn. I think he mm-hmm. was the quarterback. He plays DB now. He was the quarterback okay. that the Hell Mary against Alabama. I think he was the quarterback that year. Okay. And they beat them. Uh, let me think. Let me think some more. Damn, you just sprung that on me. Uh, shoot. Um, I mean, heck, we want to try to attach people to this country to go check it out as well. So you know, that's me, how, you know how folks are. Let me think. They want to watch. They want to watch Caitlin Clark of the CFL. <laughs> no, give me some time. Give me some time. Let All me, right. So let me come back so, with those names for uh for next week. Days. Right now, off the top of my head, I can't just name who. I mean, Chad Kelly was one guy. Yes. At Ole Miss or whatever. Yeah, he, he went to Ole Miss. He won't be playing the first nine games. Uh. Let's see. Oh, Vernon Adams of the BC Lions. He played for Oregon. He was the quarterback mm-hmm. of Oregon. Uh, he, he, he throws the ball a lot. He throws the ball. A lot. I'll, I'll let you research it and go through the players and all that stuff. But this is not CFL related, but it is Canada related. We are in South Florida, and tomorrow yeah. is the Stanley Cup opener, game one, between the Florida Panthers who sent the New York Rangers' sorry asses home, and the Edmonton Oilers. Hey, I used to play that. When I grew up, okay, I'm 46 years old. When I grew up, Edmonton was on top of the world with Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, and all those guys in that, uh, Grant Fuhr, the goalie. Yeah, I know some names because I used to watch Edmonton. Don't even know why I chose them. I guess it's probably because they're the best team. Um. But at the same time, the Pittsburgh Penguins with Mario Lemieux, and there was the Mario Lemieux-Wayne Gretzky rivalry, and I was always a Wayne Gretzky guy. Again, don't know why. I just was. I was a kid. But I always cheered for them Edmonton Oilers, and I was so excited to see those guys beat the Dallas Stars because I think it's a really cool dynamic that you have the furthest team in the South going to the furthest team in the North. It is like a 2,500-mile flight. It, no one flies direct into Edmonton, I guess, unless you're chartered by a professional team. And you might even need to stop because, I mean, what is it, a seven-hour flight? Direct eight hours? It's a Where? long-ass flight from Miami to Edmonton. Uh, let's see. I always had to take a connected flight. Yeah, but you weren't going as a charter of the I team in the Stanley Cup. Five hours in total. I went to Houston when it was three hours, and then from Houston to Edmonton was like another two and a half hours. So it was like five hours. Two and a half hours from Houston to Edmonton? Yeah. Bro, it's six hours to L.A. from Miami. How is it six hours to Edmonton? I, I'm just telling you what. Like flying to damn near Alaska. I'm telling <laughs> you what it was. It was, it was two, uh, two and a half hours to Houston or something like that from Miami. And then uh-huh. three hours from Houston to, to, to Edmonton. Wow. Because yeah, because I, I just think it's so cool, the dynamic. And when they show it on the map, you're like. You just go straight from Houston. You go straight up. And it's under Calgary. Edmonton is lower than Calgary. I thought Calgary was lower than Edmonton. You know what? You know what? Bro, you're kill- you're killing me, bro. You live in Canada. You don't know a damn map. Look at the map. Oh man, I got I I know Edmonton's north of freaking Calgary because Edmonton's no, like another side of the planet. Edmonton is north of Calgary. Yeah, I thought so. Like it's in yeah. the middle of nowhere. Calgary is lower, than, but it's yeah, not Calgary that. is That's Calgary far. is south of yeah. Edmonton. Yes, yes. At Calgary, you're damn near. You're closer to the U.S. I mean, yeah, heck, yeah. you're what are you almost Calgary in Montana? By, uh, is it Montana? Yeah, it's north of Montana. Montana, because I had yeah, Edmonton is Edmonton is like almost in the freaking middle of nowhere. Holy, like it's right. It's, I just I just think it's dope as hell to see them have to travel that damn far and have a because Canada's not won a Stanley Cup since 1993. That's crazy. So, really? so this is not just the cup. This is like a Canada thing. This is Canada versus U.S. This is Canada versus the U.S. But 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 but, but, but I'm sorry, but the, the Panthers are gonna kick their fucking ass. <laughs> the Panthers are – I watched – I there's one thing that I will always watch, and I may not watch regular season hockey all that much besides yeah. the Panthers. Playoff hockey is the most intense thing I've ever seen. It's more intense than the NFL. 
it's more it's definitely more intense than than the the NBA. Um, baseball obviously is no hitting, so but I mean baseball every pitch is like you know the, could be the biggest thing on earth. But in hockey, you make one mistake, you lose the game. Like a game is so damn fast. And I'm watching the Panthers play the Lightning, play the Bruins, play the Rangers. And you're watching the hitting. And then I go watch the Western Conference, and which used to be called the Campbell Conference. The East Con- used to be called the Wales Conference for the Americans out there. Yeah. I, they've changed so many things in hockey, which I don't exactly like. Like, be traditional to what you are. And I, and I like stuff like that because it's like, they, they kind of Americanized it with East, West, and crap like that. I don't like that, yeah. but whatever. But, man, the Panthers series were hitting. I mean, they're, the, the Panthers are so aggressive, you know, attempting to put the puck in the net um, and goal. And you're watching Edmonton, you're watching um, Dallas, and the teams, and they seem to be more finesse. It's more of a finesse style of play, less – brutality <laughs> brutality yeah. is the best word i mean last year the the vegas golden knights kicked the panthers ass but that was also in large part because the panthers had two of their best players matthew kachuk broke his sternum in game three and aaron ekblad their de- one of their def- best defensive players was playing on a broken foot yeah you imagine playing hockey on a broken foot yeah you know how fast like, those players are on that damn ice it's incredible it's, it's unbelievable i remember going there. did you go to a hockey game when you were there uh yeah, I went to Edmonton. amazing. It's amazing. I went to Edmonton game, and I was, and as long as I was in Winnipeg, I was supposed to see some Winnipeg games, and I just never ended up going. My last week in Winnipeg that year, that I got hurt, that would have won the championship, by the way. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. if I was healthy, but hey, even I know that. Um, I was supposed to go to the Winnipeg hockey game the last week before I left, but it was just hectic without moving and getting back to the states. I just wasn't able to make it. And all the other times, even Calgary last year, I, I just didn't make it. But I went to Edmonton before. And I think I, oh, I actually went to Winnipeg, like their junior hockey team, like getting them ready for the league. I went to a couple of those games. So, man, those, how they move on that, on that damn, I was about to say on that field. How they move on that ice is tremendous, man. I, cause I've been on the ice before. Like, I just go ice skating every now and then. They're first, running on ice. First of all, I'm scared as hell. Because I, I am terrified that that blade is going to, I'm gonna fall if somebody. If I see you in the net or cut your fingers off or something like that. I'm terrified. I'm gonna fall if somebody's behind me. The blade is just gonna rip whatever off of me. You know, whether it's my arm, my <laughs> fingers, my toes, your I, neck. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I hope it's one of those those areas rather than that neck area. Lord, that can be we see it. It's happened. It's happened. happened. So, condolences to the to that family. But yeah. No, this I, I I'm excited as hell. I really think the Panthers are going to win this series. I, I have the Panthers in five. Um, they're just so damn. They're they're so, so fucking good, man. And, and and the crazy thing about the Rangers series, I don't know if you watched any of it, but against the Rangers, the Panthers dominated the series. Like it was four two, but this was not a close series. Yeah. The Panthers lost a game where they outshot the Rangers by sixty. By sixty, not sixty on net. But sixty by sixty shots. So, because if you have a shot and it goes just wide of the net, it's not and it's not saved. It's not a shot on goal, but it's a shot. And they outshot them by sixty in game three, and they and the Panthers lost five four in overtime. And there was just an onslaught. And the goalie for the Rangers, Igor Shosturkin, that guy's amazing. I mean, the saves that dude was making. You're sitting here saying. Holy shit. Yeah. And yet, whenever the Rangers had a chance, they converted. And it was like, bro, man, this is like, you're, you're, it's, it's like the soccer game that you're watching. And I was always telling my kids, oh, you can dominate the game, but you have to be, continue to be aggressive, 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 and be there for the rebounds and putbacks in, in the recreational league of soccer. Because that's where most of your goals come from. And that's where most of your goals come from in hockey. Yeah. The Panthers lost game three on a shot that hit the guy for the Rangers in the chest and redirected into the goal. He didn't do anything. His body hit the puck. <laughs> and, 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 and they lost the game that way. You're like, we're down 2-1. Yeah. We come back and win the next three and, and win the series. But 
every single game, the Panthers, like, just dominated this game. But this guy, Shesterkin, he kept the Rangers in it because everyone who watches, like, this, these games could have been 7-1 to one every game with the way he played if, if with a, a human goalie, you know. And I don't know if this guy for Edmonton is as bionic as Shesterkin is. I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I am correct that he's not bionic like Shesterkin because if he's not, I cannot see the Panthers not winning this series in five. But I think it's the coolest thing around it to see. It's like the team in Dade in South Florida has the best hockey team in the world. Like, come on, man. Come on now. You know, the best hockey team in the world could be in South Florida. And the funny thing is, is 12 of the Panthers players are from Canada. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, there's a... I mean, most players are from most players are from Canada, but it's like you know, I, I just think it's. I'm excited. Canada. I'm not gonna be able to go. I'm not gonna be able to go to any of the games, but because I have a conference next week, and my wife is still not capable of walking up, you know, stairs and stuff like that with a C-section. But uh, yeah, but no, that's uh, I think it's pretty dope, and I, I'm sure the Canadian fans are gonna be. Maybe not. Maybe they hate each other enough that Calgary fans would be like, fuck you, Edmonton. I don't want you to win. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I think Canada's going to pull it together. I, even though it's a rivalry, a rivalry between Edmonton mm -hmm. and Calgary, uh, I think they pull together right now. They band together. They just want one for the old for the, oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Yeah, well, they ain't going to win this one. Oh, they made it. They, they ain't going to win this one. The Panthers are coming, man. Matthew Kachuk, Sergei Bobrovsky, Alexander Barkov. Gustav Forsling. See, I know the names. I know the players, man. I'm, I'm like brothers with these guys now, man. I've been watching this shit for three years now because the Panthers have been good for three years. They've been good. They've been good. They, you know, but this year that they're, they know what it's, they know what, what it's about. They, they're kind of coming with that same uh, feeling of the Boston Celtics. Like you get this shit done, or you may not have another chance. <laughs> so. But anyhow, you had anything else for us, Nick, before we sign off? No, I don't. I, I had some stuff. I just forgot. I should, I'm going to start writing shit down. <laughs> I write shit down when I can think of it. I, mean, I had a couple of things. I'm like, oh, I got, oh, okay, what are you talking about this and that? And it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it is what it is. I don't, I'm looking forward to doing mm. more shows during the week, actually. Um, we said we're going to get y'all some more content during the week. Just signing off. I'm pretty sure every NBA did. Me and Rudy's going to get on after the game and just go on about it rather than during the game because it's kind of hard to do it during the game. To watch. I mean, you know, yeah, it's hard to watch. because The Celtics did win by uh, 18. Yeah, so next game, I think, uh, was Sunday probably. I'm pretty sure it's Sunday. Was it Sunday? Oh, okay. Today's Sunday. Uh, they usually have I, Sunday. But whatever. Usually. Usually. Oh, we do have some things that are popping off, everyone. I mean, you know, just this I can announce already because it's, it's already happened. Um, but pro sports fans is an app, um, that you can download on Apple or Google. And it's basically a social chat app for, you know, teams in, in the leagues. And, uh, Sean Salisbury, former guy from ESPN, he's a big, uh, uh, big in this, in this, in this, uh, app. And, um, a buddy of mine from sports illustrated asked me to jump on and starting this season, I mean, we may start doing it. We could start doing it potentially in the near future, but definitely once the season begins, it's an it's on your phone, so it's not on the computer. We will be jumping on on the app and chatting it up, watching Heat games. Um, I actually can do the the, the Yankees games as well because I'm a Yankees junkie. But yeah, we are the admin. We'll be administrators, and the channel will be ours, and we'll be promoting. Obviously, you know. Come on now. Talk about come on now, the podcast. And be sure to go and support this app. Join the app. Subscribe. Join the Heat Nation one. Join the Yankees one. So you can check us out and whatever other teams that you may like, you know, because uh, it's a nice app and it's going to be continue to grow. I mean, all these apps start somewhere. And this one is going to be a really good one. And we appreciate the opportunity to jump on and talk sports and, and shoot the shit with the fans. So that's all I got. And, uh, if you haven't by now, like, subscribe, and comment. Share our, our videos. We have a lot of content on there. We have over 400 videos now that are on, 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 you, on the channel. We have up to 675 subscribers. Get us to 1,000. You know, oh, yeah. We broke 4,000 4, hours of viewer content. So, 
you know, for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, come on now podcast. And on Twitter, X, come on now pod. Anything else, Nick? Man, I, I, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll bring up the next Why? No, I, I talked to Donald the other day. And I talked to him about bringing up like a little, a little topic or a little, let's say a little seed or a little part of the show where we do <clears throat> off the rails. I wouldn't call it off the rails. Mm-hmm. Where we just talk about not, nothing pertaining to sports. It's just random shit that happened in the world. Or like just like Bad Boys movies coming out. Which Bad Boy movie was better? Or which this or that was better? Or do you like being in 72 degree weather? I mean, AC when you go to sleep, 68, 64. Like little random shit where we just have conversations where anybody can hop in and just converse and talk and you know, we just talk about little shit that goes on in our lives. All right. Uh, well, I think, uh, I don't know if you saw the bad boys are going to go from being cops to being bad boys. <laughs> you think they'll die? I haven't seen the movie. I'll probably go see it. You think they're going to die at the end? No, 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 no. But it should be. They're the not going to kill them? It should be the last one. No, they... Good Lord. I mean, Martin Lawrence is 59 years old, man. He looks like a. Wait, well, how long was Danny Glover out there running around? But, 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 man, but Martin Lawrence can barely walk at this time. It looks like from me, he had the stroke and all that. And then he looks. He looks, he looks like he's in rough shape, you know. I, I wish him the best, but he looks like he's. He looked like he doesn't need to put on the extra makeup for Big Bubba's face anymore. Because so, he already has it. Yeah, it's like naturally Big Bubba's face. But hey, it happens, man. Life goes on. You grow. You know, things happen. You gain a little weight, stroke this, that, that. You get a little weight, stroke. You said I, I said, a little weight, stroke. I said a weight, a stroke. You know, oh. things, things happen. <laughs> In life, you have to battle through. You know, you get through. You keep pushing. Hopefully, he's uh, getting better I, and doing better. I have to think both these guys are truly using stunt doubles now to jump over cars and shit. Yeah, 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 for sure. I know Will probably still trying. Will lives a, a fascinating life where he goes out and do different. This things. is his first movie since Slapgate. Oh yeah, for real. I thought he came out with one after that. Did he? I don't think. I don't know that. I mean, this is the first one since you know they can't. He can't promote it. His movies cannot win awards. That's fine. Because he got kicked out of the whatever, the yeah. associate academy or whatever. So I mean whatever, you can't get a you know, will go and show watch it and, and Oh, I mean I'll watch it. I just money it's the profit. first one since, you know. I, I think you'd rather get paid thirty, thirty, twenty million and or get an award. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, no argument there. You no argument there at all. Shove it. We can't have any more of this. Vid- this movie can't come out a fifth time, though. I, I can't watch them in- at 60 years of age trying to play cops and robbers like that. So. Hey, a bit office, much. Just the whole <laughs> movie in the office. <laughs> well, that's it for us today, folks. Uh, thank you for watching, and please do subscribe. Come on now. See y'all in a couple days after the next game. All right. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.